or not what would be called securities, even in the U.S., Canada, and Taiwan, the three jurisdictions that follow something similar to the Howey test that we've talked about. Three quarters of the market is, is non-securities. It's just a commodity, a cash crypto. Um, so you'll hear debates about initial coin offerings and what's a security and what's not a security. Relevant, relevant and important debate. But for three quarters of the market, it's not particularly relevant as a legal matter. Oh, what could have been with Gary Gensler? Everybody, welcome to the live stream for Saturday. Today, we're going to take a look at, it was an interesting conversation on the All In podcast. And it was actually with uh, Mark Cuban as their guest. I know some people, especially in the crypto space, are not big fans of Mark Cuban uh, because of who he supports. And of course, he's had uh, quite a bit of uh, uh, trolling uh, encounters with uh, Elon Musk. And some people you know, get a little bit out of shape about that. But I always try to keep an open mind. And this interview was roughly an hour and 50 minutes, somewhere around there. And uh, I linked in the description so you can watch the whole thing because it's important to watch the whole thing to get exact context of where things are coming from. If you get little snippets of information, I mean, it's, it helps, but to get the whole broad spectrum, you have to watch the whole thing. So what I did was I watched the entire episode so you don't have to. And I picked apart three different pieces. And we're going to go over, over everything from, uh, of course, as you may know, Mark Cuban is now uh, heavily supporting Kamala Harris and where things are going as opposed to Donald Trump. So whether whichever side you're on, it is irrelevant because you have to take a look at both sides and say to yourself, OK, what happens if this person wins? What happens to me? What can I control? What can I absolutely do? And then you can also take a look at is if this person wins, where is the direction going? And there is a plethora of different options here as far as like where the country is going, where the taxes are going, where security is going, where border is going. I'm not here to discuss that stuff. I'm just here to talk, to talk about where or what Mark Cuban brings to the table as far as insights into the Kamala Harris administration. We're going to talk about rate cuts, tech, AI. We're going to talk about Gary Gensler and where things are actually going. And then there was a, a little piece. I know people may, may hate uh, Mark Cuban for, for his different positions. But there's a one person that I think everybody universally uh, agrees with and likes is John Deaton. As I did not know this, uh, Mark Cuban is a huge supporter of John Deaton against Elizabeth Warren. Yeah, don't hate him so much now, do you? So I'm going to start off. There's three pieces. There's three clips. They're about a minute to two minutes in length. We're going to talk. We're going to I'm going to have you take a listen to it. This, again, is over an hour and 40 minute conversation. You can listen to the whole thing. I would highly recommend you avoid the first 25 minutes. It is brutal. But after that, it warms up and it warms up good. So just take a listen uh, to this piece here where uh, Mark talks about uh, rate cuts, why, how important they are, blockchain, AI, and of course, where the Kamala Harris administration actually is. Again, I don't know who's going to win. So it's important that we kind of figure this out now. And then we'll get into the Gary Gensler stuff. So just take a listen again. This is about a minute or so. Up, up. That they knew, realized that there's only a couple ways to reduce the deficit. One, you get inflation. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I like to uh, listen to things uh, a little bit sped up. So let's just, let's just bring that back a little bit so Mark's not talking too quickly. Here we go. Under control, and that reduces interest rates. And that's going to work in our favor. And I think that's happening. Now, if it's $1.6 trillion, then, you know, if interest rates go below 4%, that saves a lot of money and probably the most you can save. They realized efficiency is an important element. In her last speech in Pittsburgh, she talked about how long it took. It only took one year to build the Empire State Building. That is crazy. There's too much friction in the government to be able to do building the right way. They're going to reduce friction. I've had conversations with them about AI as a service and being able to um, optimize integrating um, um artificial intelligence into all these processes so that they don't have to keep on hiring people. I don't think their mindset, again, I'm speaking for myself and my perspective of my conversations with them. I don't think their mindset is to just go out there and just cut a ton of people. But I do think the mindset is how can we implement technology to become more efficient so that we can provide more value to the citizens of this country at less cost. And I think that's important to them. I think um, you're going to see a lot of reduction I'm trying to think of the best way to say it. 
she knows that technology is the ultimate driver of success. And if she supports new technologies, and you heard that again in Pittsburgh, she wants, she mentioned blockchain, but more importantly, she mentioned AI and how AI is key to us being a dominant military, um, uh, having our, um, our military be dominant and to have our economy grow. Because the other way to get results isn't just a slash and burn like a Vivek wants to do, but to grow the economy and that there truly are ways to grow the economy without just more spending. But, okay, so that was a lot to take in, but uh, remember, <laughs> Mark, Mark is talking about a politician. All politicians are liars. I hate to break that to you. I don't know if you knew that, but it's just true. So even though they talk a good game about this, and I sure hope it actually comes out there, but uh, you know, they're all gonna lie a little bit, or they're all going to not be able to keep those campaign promises. However, it would really behoove them to really, just like what Mark was talking about, to really take a look at the technology. There is a reason why America has become so dominant as time has gone on past World War II. And it wasn't just because of military might, even though we, we spent a lot of military. It was because we were ahead in the technological age. We essentially, Silicon Valley, bringing the internet, bringing the the the, the, the processes is as far as like technology and bring it to the forefront and then the technology leaders. There's a reason why Google is still here, even though they've actually moved a couple of their offices across, but we'll not get into that. If they understand just that little piece and then blockchain along with that, I think it's in a good place. So again, I'm not here to tell you that like, it's going to be great if Kamala Harris actually wins the presidential election, or it's going to be fantastic if Donald Trump, that's for you to decide. Have fun with that. But uh, I'm just bringing you some information as far as like where I think things are going. So there's that piece. And then I know, like we talked about, you know, people aren't really big fans of Mark right now because of where he's actually going. But uh, again, everybody can agree with this. And that is with Mark, with uh, John Deaton, hopefully can uh, thump Elizabeth Warren and take her Senate spot. I did not know this about Mark. So just take a listen to this about his uh, support for a uh, friend of the show, uh, John Deaton. Massachusetts Senate race. Yep. So uh, I'm curious about this because I think this is an area we could agree on. You're yeah, not a sure. fan of I mean, Elizabeth I like, Warren. I didn't, at all. I didn't know that. That's pretty. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a fan of Elizabeth Warren's. I've talked to her about crypto. I, I mean, I understand her position. Her basic position is, you know, bad nation states use crypto to fund their operations. The bad stuff. And she just wants to throw the baby out with the bathwater as opposed to using, you know, like I proposed a, a, a blacklist from OFAC that can be implemented in all kinds of shit. I need to get into the details. Right. But it just it wasn't going to happen. And so when John, not just being pro crypto, but, you know, his background, his character, I thought really was a positive. And so even before he got through his hat in his ring, I was talking to him, supporting him, giving him feedback and helping him. So, again, I'm not a Democrat. I have no problem, and I think John Deaton will be better for the country, better for the citizens of Massachusetts than Elizabeth Warren would be. What would be? I got to agree there wholeheartedly. So, again, I know when, when people take a look at one side, like, I hate that guy for this. Not everybody can be universally hated. I have to agree with Mark Cuban here on John Deaton, and hopefully it actually does win. And now we'll get to the last piece, which really goes over Gensler. And this is just insight. You're not going to get anywhere because it seems like, People think that the Biden administration love Gary Gensler and that he's going to be here forever. So just take a listen to this because, you know, Mark has actually sat down with uh, Kamala Harris and uh, talked to her about this specific issue. So this will be this is about uh, two minutes, two and a half minutes or so. Very short. I tried to to get to the meat and potatoes of it as fast as I could. So just take a listen here. Your token, then depending on how many people you were trying to sell it to, you would only be able to do that with qualified mm -hmm. investors. Right. But what happens is Gary Gensler is making it so difficult to register. And what he's what he should be doing is saying, here's the bright line regulations. If FTX wants to loan out all their Ethereum, you have to do what they did in Japan. You have to have 95% collateral and 95% of anything needs to be put in cold storage. If he had followed the same rules for crypto that Japan did, FTX would still be in business. Sam Bankman Free might still be in jail, but FTX, three euros capital, they, they'd still be in business. Okay, before we go on, I think that's a big point because I mean, I thought about that. You know, if Gary Genzer would have done his job and unfortunately he was incompetent and he sat down with Sam Bankman Free with FTX and just, I mean, this has been on, this is a, a public ledger. 
where it's actually been said that he sat down with them, he's talked to them, and he went through the whole process. And if he just would have followed the rules that were supposed to be in place, crypto wouldn't have crashed so hard. And it was because of that. And this is one of the reasons why I think he's going to be kicked out. So I uh, have to appreciate that point. And then we'll finish this up. And of course, where is Gary going to be? What is the direction the administration is going to go? Pretty much says it right here. Because he did the wrong thing. Now, I've literally talked to Kamala Harris at lunch about this specific topic of litigate regulation through litigation. And as a lawyer, she got it immediately and she knows it's a problem. And they know and she's even mentioned it in one of her speeches that that's something that they're going to deal with. Can All I, right, before Mark, can we I get your here. reaction to the story from The Washington Reporter? There was a, a story. I don't know if it's true what or website? not. Website Washington but, Post? But, but no, Washington Reporter. So according to some Senate sources, Kamala Harris was considering Gensler for Treasury Secretary. I would call Thank that bullshit. Okay. And what's the Have Washington you asked Reporter? Her about that or? I, I, I haven't asked her about any position at all. But what I was told, and, and look, talking to people who are like always in the same room with her, the response to me about Gary Gensler was, have you heard anybody say anything positive? That's intentional. <laughs> so that's just it right there. Even though he sat down and had lunch and had uh, different conversations with parts of the cabinet, with Kamala Harris, they pretty much said, like, there's nothing positive about Gary Gensler. And they're not going to promote him. And we'll see what actually happens. I know some people say, well, remember that, you know, Gary Gensler was, was appointed by the president. He cannot be fired. That is very true. However, it is customary in these positions that as a new administration comes in and there's a new administration coming in, no matter what you uh, think it's going to happen. Biden is not Harris. Harris isn't Biden and Trump isn't Biden or Harris. So one of those two is going to get in. And Gensler should be gone. And usually it is customary for them just to step down because why do you want to get in the way of somebody bringing in uh, their own people? It'd be a very miserable four years. So uh, I think this is better each way. Now to go past that and say, well, this about the president and, and, and this for the voting, I, it's up to you. You know, there's so many different things to take a look at. I'm just showing you where things are going. And, you know, maybe things aren't going to be as awful as we think it always is. So let me know what you think about that uh, in the comments section. And let's move on to some other stuff. So there is going to be, and I, everybody's been talking about this. Uh, there's going to be a documentary and essentially, and it's from um, Netflix. They're going to talk about how Satoshi Nakamoto has been uncovered. And that person uh, is Len Sassaman. This is what they're saying. This is who they're saying it is, is Satoshi Nakamoto. And I just want to, uh, this is a great thread from Pix, Pix on Chain. And he talks about, let me see here about why it is Len was obsessed with privacy, convinced the internet, needed shielding from prying eyes. He grew older, Len kept building privacy tools, working on security. And then of course, the same time, around the same time, Bitcoin white paper was released. And then there was some uh, uh, discussion between him and Al Finney and also Adam Back. And then the, there was an email that came out that said they're, they're moving on. And unfortunately, uh, only a few months later in July 2011, Len Sassman passed away by suicide. So I know some people will say, like, there's someone said, somebody said, like, well, just prove it by, you know, moving those, those, you know, those, those dormant Bitcoin from the Satoshi Nakamoto wallet. That ain't happening if this was the guy. But I have to ask the question, and you can tell me in the comments, does it really matter who is Satoshi Nakamoto right now? As long as he doesn't really reveal himself. I don't think it's a big issue. And you can't have governments go after uh, an individual who they say can or cannot be. So for this one, I mean, you can watch the uh, Netflix uh, documentary. Some people are saying that's ridiculous because there's, a, there's much more evidence that points to other individuals, but uh, that's what we have. I just took a look at this and people were like, well, this is going to be awful. I'm like, does it really, in the long run, does it really matter? Everything's dormant. No one can really prove it. I think at this point, uh, Bitcoin is on an, an unparalleled trajectory. I think only good things can happen from here over time. Anyhow, let me just think about that. And uh, getting away from politics and Bitcoin, how about altcoins? Everybody's favorite. And everybody's, well, depending on where you're at, some of our, our favorite founders, Charles Hoskinson put out a tweet this was uh, yesterday. He says he is reading about SWE. And if you don't, haven't followed us about SWE, and, and we've talked a little bit about it. It looks like it's a great project. We'll see how it actually works. I guess uh, I stand corrected. There was 
a massive airdrop a couple, I, I think it was on Monday or Tuesday. So they've already gotten past this massive, not an airdrop, but unlock, I should say, where they had like an, an additional 83% or 87% of their circling supply put into circulation and uh, price went up. So nobody sold. That's pretty crazy. But uh, Charles says, hey, I'm just reading about SWE. It's good to see George's work come to life. It is of great success in the space. And it got me thinking, because if Charles Hoskinson can say that, something positive, which I think you know, we really all should be a little bit more positive in the space, I thought to myself, wouldn't that be a great combo? Like uh, Cardano and SWE. I mean, Cardano is the most, I mean, the second most uh, safest decentralized uh, security-wise project, uh, second only to Bitcoin, of course. And I thought about, I'm like, well, what if they could work together? I mean, it's not outside the realm of possibility. Artificial Super Intelligence Alliance, that's the longest name, or ASI, they combined the crypto projects of Fetch AI, Ocean Protocol, and Singularity Net to produce this ASI. And I kind of saw this actually happening. We've talked about this many times, but of course, if you take a look at the big businesses that actually get it, they don't create everything from scratch. They get going, they have uh, breakout momentum or velocity, and they just start buying things up. Facebook didn't make Oculus or Instagram or WhatsApp. They just bought that stuff because they had so many billions of dollars. And I can see this actually happening. And then of course, what happened with Instagram, WhatsApp, Oculus, all the rest of these different uh, companies, they shot up because they had this massive backing and they had this community behind it. And it just went crazy. Also, take a look at Amazon. Amazon didn't, they just went on, bought up Whole Foods, Zappos, you know, shoes and all that, Ring Technology, which I gotta tell you, Mark Cuban passed on, as a matter of fact, on the uh, Shark Tank, just as a reminder. So not everybody gets it right. Uh, Kiva Systems, Pilbot, all these different things they've done. And I think that could be a big boom because if people are saying, well, I'm just gonna sleep on Cardano, don't sleep on Cardano. Things could actually happen. I'm not telling you giving financial advice, I'm just saying it's out there. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that. And then to follow up with a little Cardano news, we did a, uh, a video on the Tangem wallet, which is personally my favorite cold storage device. It's uh, actually, I need to change this. It's at, it was created, uh, went out, went live in 2018. And since then, since then they've had 1.5 million users and there's been zero hacks. Anyhow, they just rolled out staking. Uh, native staking. So I'm very happy about that. And we did a video. There's links in the description now for in all my videos, which talks about uh, the staking process for Tangem on your cold storage wallet. And th they did three. They did uh, Solana, Tron, and uh, Cosmos or Atom. And I reached out to the guys over there and I said, hey, uh, if you guys could also add in a little Cardano and maybe some Near, that'd be fantastic. And I'll be damned if they didn't do it. So this is an update for their staking and it looks like, now this is gonna be in Q4. This is, we're talking about October, November, December, but it looks like the um, update to their road plan, looks like they're gonna have BNB, Cardano, Polygon, Polkadot, I guess, Ton, potentially. I actually asked them about that too, I forgot. Kronos and Nier. And I just wanna give a big shout out to uh, the Tangent team for just doing the things that they're supposed to do, which is building, and making everything safe, making it all work. And then also as a reminder, if you watch that video right now, you get 25% off the Tangem wallet until they're all gone. We had like around full 500. Now I think there's like around hundred left and they're not an affiliate link. I just gave you guys all the discount. It goes right to you. So just go pick up the wallet. It's a pretty good idea. Not wallet advice, but I'm just saying it's not bad. Anyhow, and then to finish this up before I do a little Q and A, uh, Web3 gaming has been uh, big. Uh, it hasn't really gained as, as much traction as I thought. And really what it comes down to is the Web2 bros. The Web2 bros, and if you're a gamer, you, you can chime in on this one. The Web2 bros hate us. They hate crypto. They hate NFTs. And for good reason, because the, the original game sucked. And uh, they were also a cash grab. But I see things changing. And this was an interview uh, gentleman I know, Faze Banks. I don't know who this this, this uh, guy is, but apparently he's huge uh, in the uh, in the social media space. I think he's got 35 million followers across all the different uh, platforms. Yeah, there he is, right there. Yeah, good for him. And he's getting he's been in Web3 gaming 
or getting in, in the web through gaming, but he sat down and it's about a two minute discussion where he talks about how Grand Theft Auto is going to have potentially a crypto marketplace in it. And it only makes sense. And all these web two bros are like, oh, okay, that makes pretty sense. That makes sense. That's good. And I just, it just looks to me like, I think people just need somebody in their space instead of like us in the web three space to say, hey, this is gonna be good. You have to have somebody from inside to go, hey, morons, this is gonna be good for you. And this is why it's gonna be good. So I want you to listen to this little piece about Grand Theft Auto and uh, why it could actually be good for uh, crypto marketplace. I linked in the description, I'm not gonna play it here. You can check it out. And uh, as a reminder, I, was, I took a look, I'm like, is that true? So far, there are no verified plans for crypto or NFT features in the Grand Theft Auto 6 as of now. However, there's been different articles that have been written about this that it actually you know, could happen. So we'll see. And now we've got influencers like this guy saying, yeah, it's actually going to happen. So let me know what you think about that. And uh, also, also, uh, I put a poll out today. I said, if you could buy your favorite altcoin project at a 20% discount, but you had to hold it for two to 10 months, what'd you do it? And uh, within an hour, almost 400 votes, it looks like a lot of you would do that. 78%, 13% said no, 9% said maybe. And the reason I'm talking about that is because I'm working with this project called Velos. It's not even launched, but here's how the whole thing works. Let's say you want to get a project that's within the Velos ecosystem and they team up with Near or Cell or Tia, whatever else. And let's take Near for this, this example. Say, okay, you can get it at 40% discount, but you have to lock it for two months. And then for four months, it unlocks every month, 25% or whatever else it is. So you could do that. And I think, this is not a bad play. This is the same kind of deals like VCs get, and I hate to say this, but YouTubers get. They get these types of deals, which you guys don't. And this is gonna come out within the next uh, three months, four months or so. So I want you to check this out. See if there's something that you're interested in. Link's in the description, looks something like that. And then let me know what you think. And then lastly, lastly, I just wanna remind everybody that not everything is evil out there. There are good, things going on. There are good people. And there was an, ex right now, if you're not from the United States, just know that uh, there was a massive hurricane came up through Florida, hit Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Virginia. And North Carolina uh, carried the big, huge bulk of it. And everybody was losing their mind because Elon Musk was tweeting to Secretary, uh, Secretary Pete Buttigieg and saying like, hey, I wanna deliver all these products. I wanna get Starlink in there. I wanna get these uh, services and you're not letting me. And it was like, it just blew up on Twitter and X and every place as I was watching it. And that was it. But no one reported that this happened right here, which is Elon Musk said, hey man, thanks for expediting the approval for support flights. Just wanna note that Secretary Buttigieg is on the ball. He says, glad we could address, thanks for engaging. Everybody's happy. So again, I just wanna remind everybody that it's not all negative out there. There are some good people doing good things. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Now, some people will say, well, it only took the richest man on the planet to get Buttigieg to move, but whatever. That's all we got for today. I'm just glad people are getting help in North Carolina. Shame what's going on there. But that's it for this piece. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. Now, if you want to stick around on a Saturday and do a little Q&A, which I see there's a bunch of questions, I'll answer all your questions the best of my abilities. We'll go from there. If you got to take off, get out of here, touch grass, all that good stuff. Enjoy your family because you never know when your time is done.